And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? I've got one that can see. Drones controlled by police officers could soon be flying around San Francisco if a controversial new measure gets enough votes next month. Well, I'm excited about drones because when you call 911, you want somebody right there. And drones give us the ability to get there faster than anything else. The safer San Francisco proposal comes at a time when issues of drugs, homelessness and crime have reached a flashpoint in the traditionally left leaning city. The measure would not only allow police to use security cameras and drones for video surveillance, it would also involve using facial recognition and AI, overturning a ban on government agencies using that technology due to concerns over privacy and misuse. Our goal is not to abuse our authority. This holler, bullshit, and let it ring through the land. It's to allow for the opportunity to use this technology to help make San Francisco safer. In this talk, I will talk what me and my team at Carnegie Mellon can infer from just looking at a small section of your face. In fact, we will show we can perform reliable face recognition where many current systems will simply fail. Face recognition and eyes recognition have always made a huge splash in Hollywood movies such as Mission Impossible and Minority Report. Here you see Tom Cruise entering the gap and being identified through his iris Hello, and getting Mr. personalized Jeff ads. Welcome back to the gap. You may think this is Hollywood science fiction, but this is actually science fact based on technology we have built here in my lab at Carnegie Mellon. This is our system and can capture someone's iris up to 12 meters away. There is no X marks the spot. It will detect, track the person, capture the iris, even if they're wearing glasses. We can even capture someone's iris through the side view mirror of a car and make an identification in just a matter of seconds. So how does all this work? First, we have to locate the face in the image, and then we detect the eye so we can segment out the iris. The iris is the annular region of the eye between the white sclera and the black pupil. It is the muscle that dilates and contracts the pupil to allow more or less light in, depending how bright the environment is. So we take this circular iris pattern and we unwrap it into a rectangular form. This form is then processed by special functions to generate a series of bits, ones and zeros, to form what we call the iris code of a person. If two irises have iris codes that match with a certain number of bits being the same, then we can say that they belong to the same person. Now, even if two faces look exactly the same as in the case of identical twins, they actually have distinct iris patterns. Actually, an iris pattern of a person is thought to be stable over a person's lifetime, i.e. the pattern of a baby will actually not change as they mature to old age. Now, iris recognition became popular when a famous National Geographic photographer, Steve McCurry, took a picture of this beautiful Afghan girl with an amazing green eyes. Seventeen years later, he wondered what happened to her. Well, they found her, and they matched her based on her iris pattern, even though 17 years of hardship passed. So as you can see, iris recognition can play a significant positive role in society. You can imagine our system being used to identify and find missing or abducted children before they're trafficked outside the country. Unlike fingerprint recognition that requires you to touch a physical sensor, iris recognition can be performed at a distance in an unconstrained fashion. But what can we do when we don't have such long-range optics? We have to revert to using the current surveillance infrastructure of the current camera systems. And that's where we come in. We develop smart algorithms that can infer from these low-resolution images. And that's actually what we did in the Boston Marathon case. We reconstructed what the suspect looks like amazingly well. So let us look at what kind of cameras are out there. Surveillance cameras are everywhere. Airports, subways, 7-Eleven, retail stores, even your home. We have to develop smart AI technology that can perform reliable face recognition despite these low quality images. This is our smart AI face detector. It can actually find faces that are masked, extreme off angle, headgear, extreme low resolution. It can even find a face of a football player playing in the snow with helmet. So the next step is to be able to find 
a fine set of maps of the, of the face. We can extract a three-dimensional model of a face from just a single 2D photo. And that's the key thing to be able to perform face recognition. We will show in a second, we actually use a single photo of Angelina Jolie, and we can render what she looks like at any angle. But what about faces that are masked or occluded? What can we do there? Well, we've developed smart AI software that can infer what the person looks like as a whole face just using this periocular eye region. We're showing here successfully that a system can match someone out of a database of 100,000 records. Let us examine how our algorithm is working. The first row is the input to our algorithm, just the periocular region. The second row is the results of our algorithm, the whole face. And the third row is the original faces. So you can compare the second row to the third row. As you can see, our algorithm is performing remarkably it can actually even neutralize out facial expression and facial hair. So what does this mean for you, the everyday consumer? Our smart AI software is revolutionizing the tech industry. You can imagine a smart home security system running our video analytics, performing face recognition to identify intruders who are possibly a burglar and give you a notification before it's too late. More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes. Then, it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions, a database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. So will future department stores scan our irises, like in the movie Minority Report, then offer products catered to who we are? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. Experts say that technology is here now. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. Tom Costello, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance.